We appreciate the Lord. We'll have, we're going to serve communion after a little bit, but I want to talk to you just a little bit before for a little while. Thank God for everybody being here today in the house of the Lord. This may be our last time that we'll ever be in the house of the Lord. Right. You may walk through the doors of these doors this morning, but you may not you may not walk through them anymore. Because the Lord is coming. Amen. And when he comes, he's coming without mercy. And he's coming to after a people that have made yourself ready. Amen. The reason Amen. he's coming without mercy is because he's already told us, be ready. Over and over and over Amen. and over. Then if we leave out our uh, call that God's called us, say, well, I don't have time or I, I, I have something else to do. I, I don't want to do this. Praise the Lord, in the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, I'm going to begin reading at verse 1, read through a few verses. But I want to I want to talk to you just a little bit before. Uh, I want to tell you, I want to tell you about a dream I had last night. The Bible said if you have a dream to tell it as a dream. But this has a something in it this morning, and I know that. I, I forgot to, I think I forgot to say that Susie's grandmother, Susie Morris's grandmother had passed away, uh, and Susie was up there, and she was leaving to come back home this morning, because her and, uh, and Greg are going to fly to Colorado in the morning. He has to go take some training on his new job. She's by herself. She's heading back home. It's a, a six, probably a six-hour drive in, in West Virginia. So keep her on your mind. She's tired and been gone. She drove up first Friday and driving back. Keep her on your mind because uh, this is a, it's a long drive. And uh, when you're tired and you've been with your family and all these things, but she has, she's not going to the funeral. She's just going. She went up there to be with her. And uh, which passed away, which she had this obligation, and uh, and uh, so it's uh, uh, her family understood it and told her to just go right home. They didn't have everything else. Reading from the sixth chapter, and I'm going to begin at verse one. Would you listen to this very carefully, children? Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Thank you, man. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. Think about that. With promise. <coughs> that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And five and and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient unto them that are your master according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and sanguineness of your heart, as unto Christ. In other words, just to them, as sanguineness unto the heart. You, you, owe to, you owe them, they're your, they're your boss. I know a lot of, a lot of people who want, wants to say, well, they're my boss, but I'm not going to listen to them. Six, six verse. Not with eye service as man pleasers, but as the servant of Christ do the will of God from your heart. Now think about that. With good with good and will uh, doing service as the Lord and not as man. Know that what know that whatsoever good thing any man doth, the same shall he receive. The Lord will he bring bond or free, whether he be bond or free. 
If, let, let me talk to you just a little bit. Let me stop that to run. Let me read some more here in a minute. But I want you to, I want you to just think about this. Are you a servant of God? Do you have an obligation to God? We all do. As I say oftentimes, I heard Brother Mitchell make mention of this this morning. First, I want to I want to commend Sister Donna on the fine job she's done this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, if you've read the book of Esther, it uh, you know I mean Esther went before the king with fear. And she was afraid because she she didn't know whether or not that she was going to be beheaded because that or beheaded because she. Uh, uh, but she went there with fear. And when you put yourself in into that place like Sister Donna did, she done a, a marvelous job with that thought this morning. But let me go back here. Our, do, do we serve the Lord because that we fear Him or because we love Him or because we're obligated to Him? Why do we serve the Lord? Hallelujah. Why do we serve the Lord? We should serve the Lord because we love Him, number one. Amen. And because that God is, I know people say, but God, you are unreasonable. God is not unreasonable. God is, has a reason. Hallelujah. And He called us. We see, we're not supposed to be like the world. We are su supposed to be different from the world. Now, I want you to, I want to notice something. I want to bring you another scripture. I want you to notice in the 12th chapter of Romans, and it says to be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of our spirit. I want y'all to listen to me. The world today is taking away the joy from the church because it's offering something that looks good, and something that satisfies our young people's hearts, and they are conforming themselves after that, and they're losing out on the real power of God. The Bible said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Hallelujah. Whenever you transfer, when you begin to conform yourself after the thing that they have today that's calling salvation, they call it being a good person or religious. Or oh, it sounds good, but it's rotten to the core. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. You can take it from Brother Wall. Hallelujah. Do you know that? Let, let, let me tell you something. You say, Brother Walt, I send my children to school because I believe they are safe in school. Wrong. Hallelujah. Wrong. You say, but oh, but now, I, I think that, I, I think that, let me, let me tell you something. The most corruptible thing that we're fooling with today is our school system. We didn't have to deal with that. And I've never seen nothing as corruptible as, as people are that's supposed to be in high places. It's, it has become a, it is a bad thing. Let me just say it that we could I start it, I'm going to get down where it hurts. Praise the Lord. But it's a bad thing. Our children are in situations in school in the schoolhouse. I'm not talking about our, I'm talking about right in the schoolrooms. Parents! Don't care. As long as I don't have to deal with them, I don't care. But I'm not, I'm not going to tell you any further than that. But last night, I, I dreamed. And I was heading somewhere in in my car and I got on a road and that road led me into a rock quarry where they crush rocks. 
And I drove as far in there as I could, and a voice kept saying, telling me, go on, go on in there. But I went as far as I could go, and I had to park my car. Now, I took everything out of my pocket and put it in the car, my money, my keys, and everything, and I put them in the car because I had to climb over these big rock piles. And I come over them, and I was very, very tired, and I finally made it over. And the voice said, look out, look out there, and there was a big, big river of water, a big lake of water. And I was standing there, and he said, now you've got to get across that. And there, it was miles of water. You've got to get on the other side. Beautiful, beautiful water. Hallelujah. And I was standing there and here approached me two very, very mean looking fellas. And they said to me, Brother Walls, we brought your stuff out of your car. And here it is. They had a basket and that basket had Little rocks in it about that big. They was all colors. The little rocks was. And he handed them to me, and I said, "Well, that's that's not. I don't need any box of rocks. I can pick them up every day. They're not. They, they, them don't mean nothing to me. So I, I don't really want them." They said, "That's that's your stuff. You you left it in the car." Hallelujah. Okay. And I had taken them. And then I said, well, these things don't mean nothing to me. One of the men said, give them back to me. And I handed this box back. The wooden box. His basket was. He took them. And he said, I'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> and he took them and he brought them back to me. And he handed them to me again and said, how are these? He'd ground them all up. They were all just in powder. I said, well, it doesn't mean a thing, a thing to me. Hallelujah. Not a thing. I said, well, where's my car at? I've got a black Cadillac set somewhere back in there, and, and, I, I, and I, I do want to get it. You just give it to me, and I'll, I'll get out of here some way, and I'll leave. Uh, but the only way you got out of here is across that lake. You've got to, you've got to go across that lake. But I can't swim that lake. That lake's a mile long. I, why? I can't swim that far. But that's the only way you're out. Praise the Lord. And he said, but I'll bring you your car. So he had come back with a, another box full of rocks about that big. And he said, here's your car. Here's your car. <laughs> I said, that's not my car. I had a black Cadillac. 2009 Cadillac. That I drove in there, but this is your car. Y'all stay with me. I'm going to tell you the meaning of this just a minute. God just brought me the meaning since I've been here this morning. The man said, well, give it here. He went back and he crushed all of that up in the powder. And he brought back all of that powder in a box and said, here it is. Take it. I said, but well, that won't be a thing to me. No thing. The, really the only thing that was meaning anything to me then was I got to get across that lake and I've got to get on the other side it's a beautiful lake. There's something beautiful on the other side, but I've got to get over it. Hallelujah. How am I going to get over it? I don't have a car. I can't, I can't climb back over them hills. I can't go over that water. How am I going to get back? These does not mean nothing to me. God spoke to me while I was sitting here on the organ this morning. And I was reminiscing this in my mind. 
He said, that's what the world ought to mean to all of you. This world. Absolutely nothing. Because <laughs> it's vanity. <laughs> Hallelujah. I could have poured all of that, all of that dirt in that river. But it didn't mean a thing to me, Junior. The thing that meant so much to me was, get I've got to get to the other side. on the other side. There's a beautiful, beautiful land. Hallelujah. And I thought, <coughs> when I stood there in that dream, I'm finished. And God spoke to me and said, no, you ain't finished. You're just beginning. Your journey is not over with yet. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, I've still got a journey to go. Amen. But oh my, there's a lot of rocks. There's a lot of rocks in your life. There's a lot of rocks in your life. There's a lot of rocks. But oh, we, uh, let me tell you all something. Let me, let me tell you the conclusion of this. Them rocks that have been ground up when I poured them out, they spread from just miles. Hallelujah. When I poured them out, they spread for miles. And I was able to walk on them with my bare feet. But the rocks was too much for me to walk on. Hallelujah. 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 What I need to do, what you need to do, is quit being so wrapped up. Hallelujah. I had to get to church this morning and sit down on that organ stool. If you heard me miss a few notes, I did. Because God was talking to me. Hallelujah. Nothing. Greg, listen to me. Nothing that you got in this life amounts to anything. It's what you got there. I am this life. There's a land that is fairer today. And by faith, we're going to make it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. When you and I understand how wonderful it is, death does not mean anything. There's no chapter. Hallelujah. Life does not mean anything. But God said He would, hallelujah, He would grind these things would be ground to powder. Hallelujah. All these things that's eating our soul, eating us and taking away from us the joy and the power and the glory of God. Let God put it in the crusher and when He brings it back, it will be made pure. It's all the same color. Every one of them rocks uh, was red. They were green. They were black. They were white. They were all, hallelujah, that was in that box. But when he brought them all back, uh, they were all white. Uh, it made her in the power and in the glory of God. Uh, I want you to know that the Lord, are you willing to say, yes, Lord, I'm willing to obey you in the Lord. I'm willing to hear what God has to say to me. There ain't but one thing that makes any difference in my life. And that's the power of God that lives. I'm going to tell you all something. Now, y'all listen to me. I'm down to the last years of my life. Probably won't. I may not live in another year, may not live another day, may not live. I may live 10 years. Maybe. My ancestors lived up into the 90s. If I could preach, sing, worship the Lord, I won't live there. But if I think, I don't want to. I want to go and be with the Lord. I want to live my, I had a lot of my family died. How they do with Alzheimer's and all of that. I don't want to die there. I want to be able to live a normal life and serve the Lord. God is so great Amen. and so good. But listen to me. Only Him, just about everything you got, 
Amen. You can go today. You can go today. You take every dime you got in the bank and you write it into a check. And you set that, hallelujah, take that money and burn it. And all you got left is ashes. Won't ever amount to nothing. You will just, you'll never, the money will never amount to a thing to you. But let me tell you all something else. If God calls you today, you leave here, that dollar will never amount to a thing to you. Amen. You're going to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. God trying to speak to us, church. Yeah, trying to show us something. God, let me know that I didn't need, I didn't have need of nothing. All I needed was Him. If it all burn up today. Hallelujah. When Joe Cummins called me back before last from St. Thomas Hospital, he said, Uncle Water, I, 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 I need to talk to you. Okay, Joe. He said, I'm in, I, I come down here for to have my heart checked out. I was having just some problems. Now they, they won't let me go back home. They say that I have a bunch of blockages, four or five blockages. And I've got to, and man, I can't go back because they're 80 and 90 percent. Blockages. Y'all, everybody, everybody knows that's serious. Said they're afraid I'll have a heart attack before I can have surgery. He called me back last night and said, Uncle Willard, I'm it's more serious sure than I thought it was. Will you have the church? Will you have the church to pray for me? I said, I sure will. Hallelujah. He treated he treated our church sort of bad. Some of some of them in the church. But I had to say, God, I forgive <coughs> all the things that were done. Now he needs help. I said, Joe, they won't be but one reason to keep me from asking the church to help you, to pray for you, and that's just I don't make it back to the church. If I make it back there, we'll pray for you. Hallelujah. And that's what we've done. And that's what we're going to be doing all day tomorrow. Hallelujah. Let me, let me tell you all something. Everything else doesn't amount to anything. Junior. Junior's very sick. I know that. He knows that. He don't have nothing in this world he wouldn't give for his health. He, he can only get it through God. Hallelujah. Brother Mitchell has been blessed in his life. Yes. What God's done for him this week was more than all that he owns and ever will own. Because without that healing, it would do you no good. Amen. Praise God. Would you give everything? Let me tell you something. Let them grind it all up in powder and in dust. Hallelujah. But let me have what I've got this morning in God. Yeah. He led from the power of God. Anointing that I can feel from God's love. And God's love. A people that I can worship with. Hallelujah. I don't need a whole house full. If people don't want to come, let them go. But let me tell you something. God is going to bless us in a great way. I'm going to tell you all, if we take communion, I want everybody to stay here for a minute. I'm going to tell you about something we're fixing to do. God's fixing to bless. Yeah. Hallelujah. And our Sunday school and what we're doing. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm going to serve communion. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Oh my. Help.